You mean? It's your boy, Howard. Just chilling. I'm an old girl tree, you know? You know, just kicking it. And, you know? Humans are causing CO2 levels to rise dramatically, warming the forest over the winter, allowing pine bark beetles to larva to survive. Thus the beetles hatch and eat the bark off the trees, stripping them bare. Yeah! Oh my gosh! You okay? You pine bark beetles, you know, they always hatch and they eat all my bark and it's terrible. You know, they're just, it's not nice. I hate it, you know? It just, I like my bark. Yes, well the, the pine beetles, the pine beetle is a natural phenomenon. They do live and they eat trees and trees sometimes die from them. Um, it's just a combination of a warming climate and then sometimes they have these cycles where they really multiply and can attack a larger group of trees and then um, that can lead to a lot of fuel uh, that can feed a lot of the forest fires we've been seeing in the West. During beetle outbreaks, the resulting widespread tree mortality reduces forest carbon uptake and increases future emissions from decay of killed trees. Because elevated temperatures potentially influence the number of generations of these species reproducing in a single year, similar outbreaks could occur again as precipitation and temperature patterns continue to shift. The trees aren't there, then um, but for the roots to hold in the, um, the dirt and all that stuff, then the streams aren't a good habitat for baby salmon. So that's kind of how that, the other side of the relationship between, between the two works. So obviously, salmon need trees, trees need salmon. And this, sadly, is all that remains of Todd. Once proud king of his domain, Even though Todd died, not all trees have to end their lives so early. You can reduce your carbon footprint and your carbon emissions by doing things like this. You can recycle, lower your thermostat, leave water not running, use passive solar system, solar power, and reuse. <laughs> 